hello. <laughs> so I'm just here to share a little bit about my story and how to transform pain into resilience. Um, I was born in Lima, Peru. <gasps> I know Peruvians right there. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A structure of poverty, uh, widespread violence, and underdevelopment shaped my childhood. We came to see poverty and violence as normal, and looking over our shoulder to make sure no one was following me as I walk home from school, and violence just be was inescap inescapable. So I was raised by strong women, my mother and grandmother, both of them teachers who dedicated their life to support me and change the life of so many students. Due to the lack of a babysitter, I started to go to school at the age of one year and a half, and I'm actually in the picture right there in school. Um, at the age of 14, I made the difficult decision to leave my country, my, my family, with the dream of attending college and achieving the quote unquote American dream. I moved to Novato, California to live with my two siblings and nieces. My nieces became a source of inspiration to me um, and support. But of course, as you know, um, a young, a youth um, being separated from my parents just caused a lot of anxiety and, um, and a feeling of grief. Um, this was probably the first time I experienced depression. I focus, like I focused on school and it was a way for me to cope with my depression. I felt like if I would work hard and get us involved with as many extracurricular activities as I could, um, I will be able to feel worthy. Um, while walking to my community service, um, I was run over by a car, which includes my feeling of vulnerability, which is something that a lot of youth who are separated from their parents feel. Um, I felt unprotected with all my parents, and, this, and I felt worthless. So months after, we got evicted from our apartment and my sister decided to move to live to San Jose, to actually move to East San Jose. At that point, I was exploring dropping out of high school to move with my sister, struggling with homelessness and finding a stable, safe place to live. I moved to live with my older brother and I share a room while working full time and attending high school working as a babysitter, house cleaner, retail worker, um, so I would be able to pay for the room that we were um, living in. We actually got evicted from the room again, um, and the apartment owner only gave us one week. You know, Now I know that that's illegal, but at that time I was like, okay, I have one week to find a place to live. Um, one of my closest friends, someone I consider family, um, as her parents, if I could stay in her room, while she went to UC Davis. Um, at Novato High, I experienced bullying and I felt like I never belonged there. Um, on the outside, I was excelling academically. I graduated taking five AP classes while struggling with anxiety and depression. But regardless of how much I achieve, the feeling of pain and trauma filled my heart. I was never happy with myself. I felt worthless. My self-esteem was low and I often found myself hiding my real feelings from people. I got accepted to attend um, University of California, Santa Cruz and got lots of scholarships, um, including Immigrant Rising Scholarship, which supported my dream to attend college. Um, but my depression and anxiety increased. I actually had a panic attack that led me um, to call, an, that led my family to call an ambulance because I didn't know how to seek for help. Um, I started to wish, you know, that, um, I don't know, I started to wish that I could disappear so I could, um, so I wouldn't have to deal with the pain. In my last semester of college, I was di diagnosed with a rare eye condition in my right eye 
which um, actually put me facing permanent vision loss. This increased my feeling of grief, um, but at that time I had friends. My best friend took me to um, a crisis center and she was, she didn't make it an option for me. Um, and in there I was asked about um, my anxiety and depression and the person asked me if I had um, suicidal ideations. And I, and I told them that sometimes I wish that the world could be better off without me. Um, for many people, I was doing amazing. I, was, I had the opportunity, I'm an undocumented immigrant, non-DACA, and I had the opportunity to work at the public defender office while graduating with honors in both of my majors, but it was never enough. Um, I was um, forced to attend therapy, and for the first time, I was finally addressing my post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and anxiety, and I was learning how to cope with my emotions in a healthier way. It took me time um, to see the benefits of therapy. Constant work is needed to heal. I started to write down one thing I was grateful for every day, and it really made a difference. I also bought a journal and started to allocate time to writing about my feelings. I learned about boundaries and triggers, and I built self-care practices to support myself. I started to learn how to process my emotions in a healthy way. I began going to the gym and keeping a healthy lifestyle. I focused on my growth, and I started to learn how to love myself. And that became my priority. My depression, in the past had affected all aspects of my life. Um, and the process of healing was never linear. There's no right formula to know what, what do you need to do to heal from something. After months, I started to build a strong sense of resiliency about my struggles. And I said, I'm undocumented and unafraid. I learned that once you overcome your internal fears, there's no force that can stop your drive to keep going. I learned that once um, I organized to empower fellow undocumented folks to transform their pain into resiliency uh, through community organizer, organizing. I became an advocate, organizer, and a fearless fighter for justice. For the first time, I felt like I was making a real impact in my life and in the life of other people. And I was really happy about it. Um, we were organizing to abolish ICE, to um, stop counties from collaborating with ICE, the sheriff's office, and from deporting more of our community. After months, um, I started to feel really resilient. And I felt like the world was amazing. Um, three months ago, I was accepted into law school. Um, Yeah. I mean, as an undocumented student like me, non-DACA, um, attending law school was, and it is, extremely difficult. We don't get any federal financial aid. Um, tuition, it's about $53,000 a year, and it is really expensive to pay it. So I was fortunate enough to get scholarships like the San Francisco Bar Association and the California Change Lawyers. However, life is always unexpected. So two weeks before starting law school as a first year law student, one of my sources of, in of inspiration, Kayla, was shot and killed at the Gilroy shooting. The grief process, I'll say it's a learning experience and it is really difficult. I struggle with physical pains that I didn't understand, insomnia, a lack of appetite, and I had to make the choice of deferring law school for a year to be able to focus on my grief and my mental health. I felt empowered, actually, to prioritize my mental health and emotional being um, before my professional goals because I know I can always be an attorney, but I know I needed to prioritize my health and my family. 
The feeling of grief is painful, but this time I know how to transform pain into resiliency by focusing on my needs and being gentle to myself. Understanding that the pain I feel from Lucy Kayla, it's as strong as the love I had for her. I love her dearly. And it is important for us to understand that as undocumented immigrant people, we have, experience, we have experienced layers of trauma from being separated from our land, our people, our roots. Being undocumented, it is dehumanizing, can be dehumanizing in a system that is constantly questioning you, your humanity. Not having a war permit and being offered opportunities that I can't take is dehumanizing. In order to transform energy, I need you to do three things. So the first step is to understand yourself. What do you need to feel whole, to feel love, to feel happy? The second thing is to communicate that to the people around you, to put boundaries to society um, and the people that love you. Placing boundaries on how much you can give of yourself is extremely important. Your productivity does not equal your worth. You do not need to be a billionaire to feel worth it. You are a person, just the fact that you're alive, it's enough. You are the person that knows yourself the most, the best. You're the only person that really have you. You know what you need, you know, um, you have that intuition to find what your needs are. The fact that your life, as I said, is definitely enough to give you purpose. The third is to establish a self-care practice. Make sure you allocate time for yourself. This happens on a daily basis. We need self-care to keep us grounded, mentally stable. Nature is the only perfect thing we have around us in this universe. Reconnecting with nature can provide you healing and resiliency. I, I definitely um, tell you that mindfulness and hiking are great tools for self-care. To this day, I continue to struggle with trauma, but I have the tools to convert, it, convert trauma into resiliency and fuel it to continue advocating for my people and the movement. Taking care of yourself is crucial to the movement, to the immigrant rights movement, to any movement. We must transform pain into an unstoppable force for change and success. And my question to you is, how can you transform energy in a daily, weekly basis to achieve success? What is your daily healing routine? Thank you.